Hey everybody, today is August 25th, and it's the Feast of the Apostle Titus. Now Titus was one of the Apostles of the Seventy, and if you recall, we covered who were the Apostles of the Seventy in a video on July 30th. So you can look back at our YouTube channel and check out who are the Seventy Apostles from July 30th, and you'll learn more about who this important group of Apostles were. Now let's look more detailed at who St. Titus was and what we can learn from the epistle reading from today that was written from St. Paul to Titus. Now first off, who is St. Titus? The tradition of the church says that St. Titus was a Greek pagan and that he joined the church under St. Paul and through St. Paul's teaching. And then St. Titus joined St. Paul in his journeys and eventually stayed behind in Crete, where he became the bishop of the Church of Crete and did a lot of important work there. And some of the work that he did, we learn about from the encouragement that St. Paul gives him in today's epistle reading. Now, St. Uh, Titus eventually ended uh, the rest of his life in Crete and died at a, an old age, peacefully, and his relics stay today in Crete, and his uh, relics can be venerated at the church dedicated to his name in Iraklion in Crete. And also an interesting point, the name Titus is a Greek word as well. In Greek, it's Titus or Titos. Now, St. Paul uh, has this epistle reading today it's only three short chapters, so it's really short. Even though the entire epistle isn't included in today's reading, I would encourage you to go ahead and read all of it. It's only 46 verses, and you're like, 46 verses? But that's really short. It's only three chapters, really quick read, so I would encourage you to do that. But if you don't have the time, you can just read the quarter of the book that is included in today's epistle reading. So let's look at a couple of the uh, important points that St. Paul raises in his letter to St. Titus. The first thing is that it says that St. Paul left St. Titus in Crete to put what remained into order and to appoint elders in every town. What does that mean? Well, today we don't refer to church leaders as elders or overseers. We refer to them as presbyters and bishops. And in this epistle, we also see some of the qualifications that St. Paul says should be followed for who should be elders and overseers or presbyters and bishops. And he also says and he encourages St. Titus to teach what accords with sound doctrine. What's important here is that even at this early stage in the church, we see that there were disagreements on certain aspects of teaching. And in this epistle, we see that those disagreements had to do with the degree to which new Christians needed to observe Old Testament Jewish law. And St. Paul was really encouraging the Christians in Crete to not be led astray by feeling as though they have to observe all of the Old Testament law of circumcision and, and things like that, that that first council that was had in Jerusalem decided by the apostles that new converts to Christ did not have to observe all of the Old Testament law. But even despite that council, there were still disagreements and people weren't necessarily following that council. So St. Paul through Titus were working to encourage those early Christians to observe the law as Christ handed down to them through the apostles. Now, it, he also says to urge the young men to, self, to be self-controlled. What's interesting here is that he's encouraging all aspects of the church specifically to self-control. He talks to older women, to older men, and also to young men to, young men to be self-controlled. And that's important for us today because it reminds us that we as Christians um, are, are free. We're free in Christ. But we're called to use that freedom in control of our bodies and our spirits, that we're not led astray by whatever we want to do, um, that we need to remember 
that we should be using our bodies and our spirits to glorify God, not just whatever our, our, uh, our desires are for that day. He says even, St. Paul is saying to St. Titus, we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, and slaves to the passions. But despite that, we aren't anymore. So he's also encouraging them in a way that says, I'm one of you. I also used to struggle with some of these things, but now I'm called to something higher, to a higher standard. And then he says last in, in uh, the third chapter, verse one, he says to remind the, the church there in Crete to be submissive to their earthly rulers, to be obedient, to be ready to do good, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarrels, and to be gentle and courteous. So we as Christians today are called to heed these words of St. Paul, to heed the work that St. Titus had for the church in Crete. And as we're reminded of this is that scripture sometimes feels very distant because it's, you know, what is, who is Titus? Who is the church of Crete? But Christians have remained in Crete since this important work of St. Paul and St. Titus, and that the Orthodox Church is still alive and well on the island of Crete. And that is our message today, to continue in listening and being encouraged by the writings of St. Paul to be courteous, to be following the teachings of Christ, to be self-controlled, and to ask for the intercessions of St. Titus, who we celebrate today. Amen.